Um, if you've got your bulletin inside the bulletin on the, if you're looking at it, be the right hand lower corner, look at your bulletin. If you have a cross in that corner, just raise your hand. Okay, there's one. There should be four of them. Okay, that's two. There's three. All right, one more if you'll find it. Listen, if you have that cross in the bottom of your, your bulletin, after service, you have won one of these lilies. So there's four lilies. Take the lily home. Okay? Everybody got that? All right, don't forget to look at your calendar of events. If you can join us on April 8th between 1 and We'll probably go to 4 o'clock. We're having the eclipse party. Worship the sun. Yeah, yeah. Good, right? We're having that. From 1 to 4, music, hot dogs. It's a fl uh, flammable event as well. We need some folks that are willing to help grill out hot dogs and pass them out and those type of things. So if you're willing to help with that, please let us know. So how does spring flowers greet each other? They say, hi, bud. <laughs> I know, I know. Someone was whining back there. I agree. Today we're going to talk about Easter obedience. We all know the Easter story. How Jesus died on the cross for our sins, buried, rose three days later, now sits at the right hand of the Father for that gift of salvation. Amen. We're going to talk about obedience. See if Christ would not have said, your will, not mine, Father, and did not follow with, through with the obedience that was his destiny to do, we would not have that gift of salvation. We're going to talk about how obedience and how God deserves total obedience. Sometimes we like to do partial obedience. We like to say, that's good enough. We like to quit about halfway through, and in doing so, we never realize what God has in store for us. So as we are talking about He is risen, and we're welcome as we worship the risen Lord, we're going to talk about a little bit before that. Three points on the Passover obedience. Jesus is the perfect example of obedience. He went to the cross for us. You can turn your Bibles to Exodus chapter 12, verses 5 and 6. I'm going to read for you. These are the instructions that God gave Moses to give to the people before uh, the judgment on Egypt. It says, you must have an unblemished animal, a year old male. You may take it from either the sheep or from the goats. You are to keep it until the 14th day of this month. Then the whole assembly of the community of Israel will slaughter the animals at twilight. Very specific instructions. When obedience comes to you from the Lord, it's very specific on what He wants from you and what He wants you to do. Our choice is to obey His will or obey our will. And we need to make sure that we hear what God wants us to do and surrender to the very specific instructions that He gives us to complete the obedience that He wants from us. Because if it's not done correctly or on God's timing, it won't work. In fact, there was consequences in judgment if it was not done right. So we take a look at this and we see that the first stage, the lamb must be unblemished and watched after for to the 14th day, Exodus 12, 5 and 6. And I truly believe that lamb was to be taken care of. If it got fell, if it got scarred, it wouldn't be unblemished. 
if it got hurt in any way. So you had to pay very close attention to it. You had to do everything properly to keep it in the shape it needed to be in, to be sacrificed. And I believe that 14 days of that kind of intense care, we would get feelings for that land. It would draw us into attention with that land. And then on that 14th day, you would have to sacrifice it. I think God wanted us to feel, or wanted them to feel the sacrifice that has to happen. Because his son was going to sacrifice for us. And without sacrifice, there is no worship. Without sacrifice, there is no complete obedience to God. I know we've all said it when you're doing something and you're trying to get it, but it's not really perfect. You look at it and you say, eh, that's good enough. God wants complete will. He wants complete sacrifice. We must get to know and they must got to know and care about it to create that feeling of sacrifice. We took communion here Good Friday. And every time I put my mindset to where I can feel the sacrifice of what my Lord Jesus Christ did for me. Someone that didn't deserve it, someone that was perfect, someone that showed God's love and mercy and grace and they nailed him to a cross. And he went there for us. So communion is, is a renewal of that sacrifice feeling for me. Of what he was willing to do for little old me. Now what am I willing to do for him? It goes on down and it says they must take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses where they eat them. So the next step that needed to be done completely and it needed to be done on time was to take that blood and put it over the doors. This would protect them from death that was coming, the firstborn, Fiji. If this wasn't done, the firstborn would die. It doesn't matter if you were a follower or a believer. If we weren't obedient to what the commands of God tells us, we suffered the judgment. You couldn't put it halfway up. You had to complete it. And it had to be done in God's timing. This is what obedience does for us. When we're willing to do things on God's timing, when we're willing to sacrifice and do obedience, when it's necessary to do, we receive the blessings that God has for us. When we're only willing to do what we want to do, or that's good enough, or buying the excuses not to do it. <laughs> then we get the judgment. Because we were not willing to worship 100% of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is important that you understand. That worshiping God means giving yourself to him. All of it. Matthew 26, 28 says, For this is my blood that establishes the covenant. It is shed for many for the forgiveness of their sins. Now, the second stage we're going on down, this is the, the timing, the quickness by what God wanted them to do. They are to eat the meat that night. They should eat it, roast it over a fire, along with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not any, eat any of it raw or cooked in boiling water, but only roast over a fire, its head as well as the legs and inner organs. Do not let any of it remain until morning. You must burn it up, part of it that does remain before morning. How you are to eat it. Here's how that you must eat it. You must eat it dressed for travel. Your sandals on your feet, your staff in your hand. You are to eat it in a hurry. It is the Lord's Passover. Again, specific instructions. And if it's only done halfway or not completely, you would fall into judgment. 
You see, God is our provider, and he provides for us, but it's in his timing and under his, his commands. Amen. To be totally obedient, they needed to eat. They needed the food. They needed the fuel because God was going to have them on a march as they left Egypt. They needed to be ready to go because once the death angel started to take the firstborn, Egypt would not be in a very good mood. So they needed to make sure they were ready to go when it was time. You cannot be found unprepared. We need to be obedient so that God can provide for our safety. And God can provide for our blessings. We have the parable of the ten virgins with their lamps, half with oil. The other half was not. They went back to get oil and they missed the bridegroom. It's another picture that to be obedient means to be fully obedient. It doesn't mean to meet God on your terms. It means to meet God on His terms. It doesn't mean for you to do halfway through or throw something in a pot or do half the things. You have to do what God totally wants you to do. You see, you're a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. You're bought and paid for. He calls us friend, but we belong to him. We don't get to call the shots. We don't get to choose what we do. We don't get to choose not to sacrifice. We get to choose to serve. And without that total obedience, we are not in the full light of our Lord Jesus Christ. A lot of churches and a lot of Christians nowadays, they, they like to say they're believers in Christ, but they don't give 100% of what God is requiring them. And then they wonder why they're being judged instead of blessed. This is not a thing that you can fake your way through. God has specific requirements from his people. And he chooses you to do what he wants you to do. Nothing less. The symbolism is the roasted lamb. God supplies our needs. He supplies the energy for them to take off. The unleavened bread is the removal of sin. The bitter herbs to remember the hard life of captivity that he is rescuing them through. He does that for us today. He provides for our needs today. He deserves to be praised and he deserves to be obeyed 100%. Don't buy into the excuses that it's good enough. Don't buy into the excuses that you've called the shots in life. Don't ease your conscience or quench the Holy Spirit by believing the excuses and the ideas that you have of what's good enough to serve God. Because it is black and white. You serve God with everything that you are. And then the third stage is the power of judgment. In Exodus, it's a statement of God's power and deliverance. As all the trials are, and its fuel for faith, Moses and the Red Sea, and led by the fire at night, the cloud in the morning, the Ten Commandments that God gave them, the privileges that they see God's work in their lives comes from the obedience of his children. If you're not obedient at the right time or correctly, judgment will fall upon you. Psalms 9.16 says the Lord has revealed himself. He has executed judges, or justice, striking down the wicked by the work of their hand. And just as the cross was all in moment for Jesus, serving the Father, serving God is an all in proposition for us as well. In Luke chapter 10, starting at verse 25, it talks about the Good Samaritan. And there was a fellow that asked Jesus a question. Now I'm paraphrasing a little bit. He asked him a question. He said, Rabbi, what should I do to inherit eternal life? He wanted to know what he had to do to inherit eternal life. And Jesus said, love the Lord 
with everything that you are, all that you are, and love your neighbor as yourself. Well, then the fellow asked a second question. He says, well, who is my neighbor? Now, most commentaries will tell you that that was sort of a question that they're trying to trap Jesus to accuse him of something so they could do away with him. And that all looked true. But just suppose for one minute that the, that the man was interested in, in the answers of what Jesus gave. And if you do that, then it puts that question in a different light. Because now that question is about how can I narrow humanly narrow my responsibility to be a disciple, to just skim by and get that eternal life. And that's not too far-fetched. We do that today. We do that today by buying into the excuses of good enough. I got too busy a schedule to do that, or somebody else will pick that up. Somebody will get it if I don't get it. I'm barely holding my head above water, let alone helping somebody else out. We buy into these excuses, or we use our own willpower, we narrow our responsibility in obedience to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. But see, Jesus had the answer. He gave it to him the first one. He said, you're to love the Lord with everything that you are. You don't have the right to narrow your responsibility of your obedience. You don't have the right to choose your will over God's will. Everything is on the table if you love the Lord God with all your heart, mind, soul, and spirit. Everything should be there. It should be laid out, and we should be saying, yes, Lord, not my will, but your will. Because that's the way obedience works. That's the way serving our Lord works. That's the way we worship our God. You don't have a false righteousness to narrow your responsibilities and obedience to serve your God. God has given you the gift of eternal life through his full obedience to the Father. And in doing so, he has saved your soul from an eternity of hell. Amen. You do not have the right to narrow your responsibility in being obedient to God. You don't have the right to pick and choose what you'll do and what you won't do. You don't have the right to stay in the comfort zone of who you are and not out sort or not stretch out your hands and serve God in a way that you're not comfortable. You have the right to be obedient, period. And if you're not going to be obedient, then there is judgment. You're not being a faithful servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. You need to serve God. It's all on the table. Whatever God wants from you, it's on the table. And you need to give it with a smile and a praise to worship your Lord Jesus Christ. At the Garden of Gethsemane, as he was praying, he was asking, Father, if there's any way that you'll let this cup pass by me. Any way, Lord. However, if not, May it be your will and not mine. And then Jesus willingly, voluntarily, went to the cross and died for our sins. Because it was an all-in moment. Because he loved the Father with everything that he was. Because he was willing to be obedient. God's work got done. And if you're willing to be obedient, God's work will get done in your life today, tomorrow, and for the future. If you're willing to capture your thoughts and say, no, Satan, I'm not going to let you let me settle. I'm going to serve God, plain and simple. And whatever that task <coughs> may be, then you will receive the blessings that God has for you. It will be in His will. His specific will, His timing, and you are to say, yes, Lord. That's the way God intended it, to serve Him. Fortunately, people have changed that over the time, and they want to serve God whenever it suits them. They want to change the word 
they need to buy in the false righteousness and, and not look at what God's word says because it doesn't fit their life. It is not our place to fit God in our lives. It is our place and duty to fit us into God's life. Amen. Amen. And if we can be found faithful servants of the Lord Jesus Christ, then I will tell you this, you can't outgive God. Blessings come abundantly to those that are faithful. Amen. Amen. So, stop thinking that you can make a deal with God. Stop thinking that you have a right to your life. You don't. It belongs to Jesus Christ. Bow your heads with me. If you're here today or you're watching by video and you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you can change that. If the Holy Spirit is on your heart and He's telling you that you need Him, all you have to do is say this prayer. You don't have to say it out loud, but you do have to mean it. Lord, forgive me of my sins. I'm lost and I need you in my life. Forgive me of my disobedience and narrowing the field of my responsibility to serve you. Because you are my God. I want you in my life. Replace my will with yours and I will follow you for an eternity. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. There it's still bow. Every eye still closed. If you said that prayer through the video ministry, welcome to the family of God. We invite you to come to Shining Light Baptist Church. The address is on the screen. Tell us about that decision that you made today so that we can start you on your path as a disciple. If you have a home church you're more comfortable with, then we encourage you to go to that church and tell that pastor about your decision so they can start you on your path as a disciple of Christ. If you're here today and you've said that prayer, no one's looking around, but I do need you to raise your head and your hand. I want to ask you three questions. Day and you're a believer in Jesus Christ, but maybe you have found yourself lacking in your responsibilities of obedience. Maybe you have found yourself saying it's good enough. Maybe you found yourself short in what you're supposed to do, and you know what you're supposed to do, and you know how you're supposed to live. If you have found yourself short in that, God wants you to know that He loves you. But he needs you to be all in. He needs you to choose him over self. He needs you to walk a path that is totally full of obedience and not just when it comforts you. <clears throat> no one's looking around and I usually like to put a face to my prayers. I'm willing to pray for you for strength and encouragement. I'm willing to help you in any way that I can. If you just slip up your hand so I can see it, and I will pray for you. Amen. 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 Thank you for your honesty. Thank you for showing me that the Holy Spirit is working in your lives. So take this word from me. God is worth serving the right way. God deserves to be served the right way. God demands to be served the right way if you want to worship the Lord that saved your soul from the eternity of hell. All right, you may raise your head, stand with us if you will as we give the invitation.